This is a deck list that came to me from Calming Rain. Yeah, one of my subscribers sent this in and I just thought that this deck looked interesting enough to give a shot. He uh, says he has a 50% win rate with this deck, though he is rusty and uh, not too familiar with the new meta. Maybe took some time off and actually, you know, saw the outside world and uh, that kind of thing, which I envy him quite a bit for that. But regardless, we are going to be looking at this list. For somebody who is not familiar with the meta, this is an interesting deck that kind of shakes up meta a lot. Whenever we're looking at black decks, a lot of the times I'm thinking mid-rangey things. But this looks to be a deck that's trying to clear the front of the field and swing with everything you have over and over again. What do we have in this deck? We have a Soren, right? We'll talk about what I would do to this deck at the end of it while keeping the the basic premise of the deck alive we will switch no more than four cards though we might not even switch four cards out of this deck this is pretty solid indeed so we got the sword right would like to see some more sword action but you know um he's rotating out in about nine months or so so i mean playing just one sword is decent but I really, really do like Soren. You know, you get to look at the top card and draw that card. You also get to create a vampire. And this minus seven is really good if your opponent cannot deal with it. Anyway, moving on, we got four Shieldreds. Can't complain about having four Shieldreds. That's the back end of this deck. But the essence of this deck, if I am reading this list correctly, is the early game. You're going to want to get your Evolved Sleepers down. You're going to want to do Dread Fugue pretty early. And same with the Cut Downs. You always, almost will always have something to do on turn one. Then you'd follow it up with a Tenacious Underdog. And uh, this card right here, which we've been seeing a lot of, Knight of Dusk's Shadow. Your opponents can't gain life. Nice way to get that aggro in there, right? If your opponent can't gain life, you could kill them quicker in almost all situations. And decks that rely on life gain are going to really struggle against this card. And then for two, he gets plus one, plus one till the end of turn. It doesn't have a limit, it doesn't seem like, on this card. So you could do that any number of times. And to boot, he has Menace. Again, really good in the early game when your opponent doesn't have much on the ground. Um, you also have four Tenacious Underdogs, which I'm a really big fan of this card. Uh, I'm sure you're well aware of it at this point, but I really like the aggro -y nature of the underdog on turn two he's a three two but for blitzing him in paying two life and swinging in drawing a card is always really helpful turn four or five and just getting a nice little temple play with him from the graveyard and you can do that any number of times really like this card really think it has a good spot especially in this deck for somebody who doesn't know the meta very well you got a pretty good grasp on um what black is trying to do right now and then you got your Graveyard Trespasser. What deck that is mono black is not running Trespasser in the meta? Can name a few, but can't name many. This card right here can do a lot of good. And that ward, this card, a card is great to keep it on the battlefield. Your opponent's going to have to hurt pretty hard. They're going to have to give up two cards to your one. Following that up with Liliana of the Veils. Right? So you got a lot of aggro-y creatures that come out into the battlefield. It looks like we have 20 creatures and 16 non-creatures. We are also running 24 lands with the Takanuma Abandoned Mire. Also, fantastic land. This is pretty good. So what are those 16 non-creatures? One Soren, two Lilies, right? And Dread Fugues on turn one. Pretty nice to get rid of one of those quick little plays your opponent can have. And turn four and later. It's still useful because you could discard something bigger. You got your four cut downs. Really nice aggro play in the beginning. Infernal Grass and two Heroes Downfalls. Now I really like how you have Heroes Downfall in this deck. A lot of people aren't running Heroes Downfall, but it is my favorite removal spell right now. Yeah, sure, it costs three, but Infernal Grasp doesn't hit Planeswalkers. And if you want to be swinging for face over and over again, you want something to remove those pesky pain plane pain walkers pain walkers indeed planes walkers that kind of get in your way and muck up your plan i like this deck list i really really do i think it's going to go really well as said i played one round of it uh, with it and uh, really liked the results 
but we'll get into some things that I would maybe think about at the end of the rounds. Let's get in and play some rounds and I will see you in the arena. But before we jump into the arena, if you have a deck that you want to see played, go ahead, drop it down in the comments below and whichever deck gets the most likes, we will play that deck next. That will be the next up on the chopping block and we'll see how it does. We'll see if we could upgrade it. We could see how what kind of personality that deck is trying to have. And uh, while you're at it, go ahead and make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps the algorithm out a lot. And you know what? I'm learning a lot from this channel, even about my own play style and about Arena in and of itself. Thank you guys so much for that. I am rambling at this point. Let's get into it and see how this guy does. Two mana, but this deck runs pretty effectively on two from what I've seen. We got the Underdog, the Sleeper, the uh, Night Dusk's Shadow. Right. I think we could keep it. It's not a hard keep, it is a soft keep, and we did get the mana. Yeah, start off with the Evolved Sleeper, of course, and uh, thinking about Tenacious Underdog or Night's Shadow. Man, I think Night's Shadow is gonna be the better option. I will play land for turn, and then we're gonna swing Uh, apparently he doesn't block, so we go for the Dust Shadow. Don't need to pump him if your opponent's going to take the damage, in my humble opinion. Yeah, getting him a little bit bigger is nice, but getting more creatures out on the field could be the difference between winning and losing. Okay. Interesting choices. He gets the uh, poison counter on the third one. Let's see here. Yeah, on the third one. We can do that, so we're just going to swing in. Let's see what the opponent chooses to do here. He's out of mana. Ha! <laughs> Let's it through. We will respond with Graveyard Trespasser. <laughs> Nothing in the graveyard, so not interesting. Just a 3-3 body on the field. An opponent has been happy to take the damage so far. Which is interesting. I would have been blocking. Now. I like the way this has happened so far. The big thing that I'm thinking about with this deck is it wants to be fast, it wants to get creatures out in the field really quickly. Now we can start focusing on our creatures a little bit. Let's go ahead and swing in again. Nothing in the graveyard to exile. Wait, he's not blocking? Let's see. There's a safekeeping. Do we want to kill that? Artifact or enchantment. He becomes a 3-3. Three, three. Uh, I think it might be okay to do this, but if we do this, then we lose the something. We lose something if we do this. Let's see what he's blocking. We're ahead, so... Okay, he's going to block the Trespasser. Double blocks the Trespasser. Okay, in that case, I will respond with the hero's downfall on the autumn. Yeah. I like it so far. Getting rid of opponent's creatures and such and such. Right. Underdog can now be blitzed in. The top seven cards. Put two land cards from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom in any order. Okay. That's big ramp. Swings in for two. We will not block. But going to my turn, before it resolves, I am going to put a counter on the Evolved Sleeper. There's actually things to uh, get rid of now in the graveyard. What if we blitzed in the Underdog? 
Let's just swing. Get rid of the a agar of autumn, or however you say that. Augar? Uger? Augur? He's probably blocking with the vine wall. He is indeed. We will evolve our sleeper. And it will do it again. Allowing us to draw a card. We get cut down there, which is really nice. Opponent's down to 6. We're at 18 health, so... Not feeling hardly any pressure, and wowie wow, there is Vivian. How we handle things in the wild. Let's rumble. Oh boy. Okay. Little bit odd, but let's count here. That's he's gonna block this and this. That's two, three, four, five. Five damage getting through. Wait. If I do four here. We still got the two for this, so that might be a game, actually. We'll lose two life. Put him down. Here we go. Here it is. Swings. Don't think there's any way out of this. I actually get rid of two cards. And yeah, sure, like I... Nope, we don't have anything in the graveyard. He hasn't done anything to us. Here comes a block on the glutton. The block on the evolved sleeper. Three, four, five. Activate this ability just to make sure. And that's it. <laughs> I like this deck. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. It gets the job done. Hey, that's my avatar. We're dealing with a true great gamer here. Alright. Knights of the Dusk Shadow. Uh, we're a little bit slow with this hand. I'm actually thinking about Mulligan, but we do have a Lily. What do I think the opponent is playing? I think the opponent is playing black. Yeah. It's awkward. It's too awkward. And this is even more awkward. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Put the underdog on bottom. And if this round goes very poorly, just know that I wasn't sold on the hand. You know. Okay. We could dog here, or we could dread fugue. Let's take a look at the hand, because we have that shieldred. So our early vulnerabilities might be okay. Lily is here. Invoke Despair is here as well. Good hand by the opponent. There's a Lily. Happy to help, but I'm taking the credit. Sassy right? Lily in action. Okay. He thinks his removal isn't good here. I know my removal probably isn't great. So I think that... And I hate to do this, but... We'll get rid of Infernal Grasp. Now we could t Tenacious Underdog, hit the Lily, discard the Swamp next turn, hit the Lily again, kill it. And this allows us to draw cards as well. You chose the wrong day to cross me. Okay. Mana. <laughs> oh, we could discard the swamp. And then we have Shieldreds at the back end of the game. As said, this was a clunky, clunky hand, but I think we're I'm playing it to the best of our ability. All he's got is that Invoke Despair left. And, uh, didn't quite want him to do that. That is a big weakness with what we just did. We will go down to 10. Not looking great for this round. Whatever. Luck favors the foolish after all. <laughs> oh no. Shuffler, what are you doing to me? What is this? What is this? We got children's for days. Here is a Soren. It'd be nice to get our Soren out of here. 
Oh my god. What is going on? Looks like this is definitely making the video, but it makes our choices super easy. We're playing a children. <laughs> Next turn, we're probably playing a children. The turn after that, we're probably playing a children. And the turn after that, we're probably, you know, playing a children. He has his own children. Takanuma. He's going to hit. He gets a lily. He plays the lily. Nobody knows Dominaria's shadows like me. Yeah, Minus is on the lily. I've always hated crime. And we children. That's probably smarter to play the underdog and uh, get rid of the lily. But I don't mind discarding sh children's apparently. We'll see what happens. Looking at that top card. Takes the underdog. You wish to know my secrets. Mana. Very well. Each player discards a card. We all have things we'd rather forget. Apocalypse. He plays another children. What is going on? Did the shuffler do that to both of us? And he gets his underdog. We have lost. No, we didn't. Pass. Okay, before my turn, I'm going to uh, kill the underdog. Yeah. It's not exiled. And we have to do this because that proc on the Sworn will kill us. Pay two life. Let's get the underdog down. Oh, a cut down. Yeah. We're still going after that. He'll probably trade sword or children's here. He does. And um Hmm. We don't win. We certainly don't win, but let's get rid of the Shieldred and hope to God he doesn't mine us on that sword. Yeah, there it is. I'm leaving that in the video. That's staying. One of the more awkward moments of Magic the Gathering Arena is when you draw four Shieldreds and you have four in your deck. You would think that's a deck just full of shieldreds there for a while. Let's move on. Four mana. Well, we have enough to cast shieldred. Three or four mana is generally okay. As long as you don't draw much more mana. <laughs> Three mana is like the sweet spot, but... Four I could live with. There's a red. Ah, aggro indeed. Alright, no blocks. Okay, now we have a... I think we could actually start pumping him? Might be the wrong move. But we have the Shieldred on the back end. That's why I'm not super terrified about that aggro and the mana to cast him. Play with fire. Okay, then. Looks like turn three, Tenacious Underdog. It is. Maybe get that Ronin off of the field. Just get having that done seems pretty good. Or should I just Infernal Grasp? I'm happy just chilling for a second. Okay. We'll resolve it. He's hoping to end the game really, really quickly. And since he's mono red, huh? I'm still debating killing this, but I don't think we will. We draw a mana. I play the shieldred. I pass turn. 
really wondering if I killed myself by being a little bit greedy here to keep my Infernal Grasp for something better. But time will tell. He's going to have to have two removal spells to get rid of Shieldred. Alright. Adversary with a pump. And no swings. I drew a card. That may means I gained two life. Oh yeah, this is going to be a big turn, guys. What he wants to do is he wants me to swing in, right? And then he uses removal, like a, he probably has like a, a, what is it, the play with fire, right? But, I already played mana. So if we just target the adversary here. And get that off of the field. Then... I don't think he'll have anything that costs two or more. I think this is a play with fire. And if... Ah, lightning strike. Had to be something, right? Yeah, get rid of that Ronin. Okay. And I think we hard cast the underdog. Should have swing first. Before I cast that underdog. But we'll put the opponent down to 12, now down to 10. He swings in with Kumano faces Kakazan. Ooh, Chandra. Wasn't really expecting that. This little candle's gonna set your world on fire. Lightning no, strike. Hot -headed. So what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's good. Four mana special uh, works out perfectly. Lily, Shieldred, really good curve. Like usually when you see a curve like this, mwah, hard to get rid of. Sleeper, Underdog, Veil, Shieldred, and the Apocalypse. Moving on. I'll quit bragging about the curve. It's not my deck, so <laughs> I can't say that. How brilliant I am for having a curve like that. Start off with a sleeper. Past turn. Opponent's taking his time. Mono blue, huh? Yeah. If he is mono blue, Lily's not going to have a whole lot of work. And Shieldre will be very dangerous if we could get it off. I'm going to play this one a little bit differently. I'm going to try to make him deal with the Sleeper. If he's busy dealing with the Sleeper, maybe we sneak the Shieldred out. Yeah, we're not getting rid of counter spells, but he, he's putting creatures down. That will be enough to deal with, um, or get the Shieldred out. Next turn, actually. Swing. Evolving. Yeah. Yeah, this is a slower deck, and Evolve Sleeper gets ridiculous with um, slower decks. Opponent certain it certainly is taking a while. Now we're gonna draw cards. All right. He's stuck on land. Oh, that's not good for you, opponent. If we shoulder it here, he counters, right? Because he probably has a card to do so. So I'm wondering if we just try to blitz in the underdog. Take the two damage. See, there's a stick. So he has a counter. One that he could cast for two. There it is. Gotta get it out of the hand. Man. That's another thing. Don't be greedy. Don't try to just smash him out. I mean, I usually do when I'm not recording because it's more fun to play that way. But while recording, I think I'll try to play the game correctly. 
We're gonna do it again. You can keep countering him, but he's coming back, baby. Two mana available. He does have a counter in hand. There's another make disappear. Awesome. Tenacious underdog against mono blue decks. Pretty nice. He's burned how many cards on this? Two now? Two make this appears. Cool. We won't be really needing that. Let's do it again. I enjoyed it the first few times. And he almost has a counter it. I mean, you can't be just taking this three damage over and over again. A third make disappear in your in his hand. Shuffler's not broken. It's fine. Let's see if he wants to do it again. Here it is, baby. He has to counter this. There is a stick, so he can. Essence scatter. Alright. Swing. Down to three. You are just delaying the inevitable. Who was that? I am inevitable. Yeah, can't remember off the top of my head. Oh, that was Thanos, right. This deck is a Thanos. All I have to do is snap my fingers. Okay, swing. Fading Hope. Slip out the back. Okay, we'll allow that. Now, since we have a second Shieldred, we'll try to resolve the first one. Does it resolve? It does not. Man, so many counter spells from the opponent. I mean, that's kind of insane. I play a mono blue deck and never have I ever gotten this many counter spells. Unless he just has no creatures in his deck and he's literally just drawing cards and countering things. Could be an infinite game. Delver. He's out of mana. That means game is over. There we go. Swings in. Out of mana. Out of luck. There's a pause. Oh no. You're not going to make me wait, are you? Okay. He's not. Don't be that kind of arena player, ever. It's very frustrating. <laughs> Gotta say, your head's in the right place. I think you understand the meta quite well. Let's do one more for giggles. This is an awkward hand, but it could be very good. We have removal, and we have Knights of Dusk Shadow. All right, lead off with the Dusk Shadow. Opponent, cut down. Gala Greeters. Swing. I'm actually wondering if I should pump him. Yeah, because we... Nah. Next. Move on through. Mana. And then... We'll put another Knight of Dust Shadow out and end the turn. There's mana. There's the Jewel Thief. I will cut down the Gala Greeters before he gets options. He probably wanted treasure there. Move in. We'll let it all go through. I will do this. And since this is a sorcery, we want to have a look now. 
Raiju, Helena, Elena. All right, we're saving the Infernal Grass for the Helena, Elena. Aha, and it comes down. Yeah, no. Be nice to draw a land. Yep. Now nothing can be blocked. We'll put him down to eight. Three, four, five, six, seven. Only seven damage next turn unless we draw one more land. If we draw one more land and he does not play a creature, which both of those seem a little bit out of the ordinary. All right, we take a damage there. There's a Raiju. It's gonna be six, seven, eight, nine coming at face. We could make a vampire with the Soren. We're not dead yet. Ha 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 Sometimes a life is good. No mana available. Cannot block these. Since he has no mana available, I just go like this. There he goes. <laughs> I like this. This is good. Let's move on. Post game wrap. Now, I don't know what came into constructing this specific deck, but it does work. It bites pretty hard. It swings in for a lot of damage. Really great aggro tempo plays with the Evolve Sleeper, uh, Knights of the Dusk, Shadow, and Cut Downs. Where would I upgrade this deck? Well, here's the thing that I've seen with this deck. The only real true life gain that you're going to get is from the Shieldred the Apocalypse. You might want to add, oh, and you know, a little bit on the Graveyard Trespasser whenever it works, but you're wanting to play aggro games. A lot of the times um, that life gain from the Trespasser isn't going to help. Now, I know that you can't really be, have, make a deck that's good against everything, but you know what? We kind of need a way of gaining life in here. One way to do that is by the Nazumi Road Captain, right? Uh, or the Okiba Reckoner Raid. I, I named it by the creature, not by the enchantment itself. But the Okiba Reckoner Raid might be a little bit better than the Dread Fugue. Um, you could even do something like this, where you're going to get these Okiba Reckoner Raids in quite a bit. They're common, so they're really easy to craft, just like the Dread Fugue. The Dread Fugue is an uncommon, actually, but, like, here's the thing with Dread Fugue. There are different cards that do about the same thing, and this one's a little bit underwhelming, right? The Dread Fugue, I know that... Like, if you're playing um, Dread Fugue over Duress, I'd have to ask you kind of why. Because with Duress, you pay one and target opponent reveals a hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it. That player discards the card. Whenever we go over to Dread Fugue, you may choose a non-land card from it, right? It hits more things, the Dread Fugue does, but Duress, I think, is better later in the game. Because you don't want to pump your mana into the Dread Fugue. You want to be pumping your mana into the Evolved Sleeper or the uh, Knight of Dusk's Shadow. That last game we won because of Knight of Dusk's Shadow getting pumped twice, right? So it's really hard to bump extra points into Dread Fugue. You want nice little tempo plays, right? And Duress allows you to see into your opponent's hand. So I would actually play the Duress instead, get the Okiba Reckoner's Rate in here for, you know, trying to um, get some life back because you're going to be burning life on the Underdog, you're going to be burning life with the um, Infernal Grasps, you're going to be burning life with something else. There was something else that you burn life on. Oh yeah, the Evolved Sleeper. You burn life there as well. So you, you're going to be burning some life in this deck. And let me get that up here for you, right? Um, so I would do something more along these lines. The Cut Downs, the Duress, the Evolved Sleepers, and the Okiba Reckoner's Raid. You want it to be very, very tempo-based, very early game. And uh, you need something to back you up in the later game. And that's where your Sorin takes over. The Lilies, I said in the beginning... 
Um, well, there, there's a lot of removal in this, but I think the Lilies can stay. I do like Liliana of the Veil. It's removal, and they have to use another card to defeat it. Usually, it gets two cards for your one. Nice little trade-off with it. Uh, but very susceptible to uh, maybe non-creature decks. Uh, we faced an Arcane Bombardment deck that absolutely handled us they, because we had the removal, but there was nothing to ever remove. But it happens with a deck like this. You can't win everything. You can't be set up against everything. One way to kind of balance that, and I know it, it's a little bit expensive, but you're going to have these mythic rares lying around. That's the, the, the bottleneck in the arena is from rares, not from mythics. So knowing that, maybe I don't know how to spell. Grabbing a few Invoke Despairs, but the problem with that is it's hard to know what to take out. One thing is, is, you know, because this is a legendary creature, you can only have one out on the field at a time. And uh, we had that game where we drew all four Shieldreds. <laughs> I mean, we used them. The opponent was in the same boat, but maybe going down to three Shieldreds on this. It's hard to say exactly. It makes the deck more expensive. So... If you're playing the aggro, you want like 2.2, 2.1 is kind of like where I want to sit whenever ever I'm playing an aggro-y deck. But in this one, I don't know. We It feels like we need to get the Invoke Despairs. And Invoke Despair is a rare, by the way, so I was a little bit off on that. It might be a little bit harder to craft because of that. But let's do this. Let's think of one other card we might want to reduce one of, and that might be trespasser maybe even the soaring goes away i think that we maybe want to get rid of one lily right it's hard to tell because this is a really good deck it's really solid and by changing just a few things you kind of change the dynamics of the entire deck but you know this makes it to where it could exist in the late game a little bit you get the shieldred out you draw three cards on the invoke despair against a control player and gain six life that's huge right that's a huge shift in power and strength and toughness calming rain thank you very much for this deck list i really really enjoyed it i'll put this kind of my version of the same thing down in the deck list below uh you can even go to etherhub and check it out and i've been adding my own uh personal collection on there it's gonna take some time to get it all on there but it, it's on there i've been rebuilding my collection lately it's like a hobby of mine collecting magic cards yeah i know i know the new cards don't really have the value that the old ones do but maybe in 20 years they will and i i'm planning on still being alive then so no big deal at all yeah anyway thank you for joining today and one more thank you to calming rain for this deck it was a lot of fun to play it's a very interesting and unique deck and i will see you next time in the arena bye